shark. A shark? A shark? Wow, Arthur, that's a shark? I don't like shark. No, it's okay. It's okay, you guys. It's stuff is edible. In fact, around here, they call it a dogfish. Look, feel. Huh. Come on. Come on, feel, CT. Look, feel the skin. Feel the skin. Just like this. Right. Feel the skin. It's all right. Feel it? What's it called? Denticles. Little teeth. Skin? Teeth? Right. It doesn't have scales like other fish. Its body is covered with little teeth called tentacles. Awesome. It lies sand paper. It's a nice one, too. How did you do that, Arthur? Well... Well, when I came up here to get your stuff like you asked, when I grabbed the rod, the whatchamacallit on the end... Lure? Uh, yeah, it fell over. It powered, took off. And Captain Granville told me to hold on. Yeah, it looked like it would break. Really give a fight, huh? Yeah. It's kind of fun, though. <laughs> Maybe I'll borrow some of this stuff some other time. <laughs> Boy, we really gonna have a feast. Just boil it a good long time before you eat it. Day 15, into port. They only knew a moment. What's he doing? Welcome to Lena. Great to see you again. <laughs> you said he didn't know signs. Didn't he? didn't. That's your boyfriend? To the van. Sure. Ready with that phone? Sign. That's right. Hey, Eric. Que pasa? Ramon. <laughs> Great to see you, old pal. It's been a long time. You must be Dr. Arum. And I've really enjoyed reading your papers. It's a pleasure. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, this is CT. Hi, CT. Hi. And this is Arthur Spencer. Arthur. You guys eaten? Not yet. Care to join us? Here's the menu. Fresh caught. Just an hour ago. Ramon, I spent three whole months with you last summer, and you never caught more than seaweed. It's a beauty. Actually, I... He's even teaching me to fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be darned. <laughs> good. That is so good. good. Really, really good. I have a toast to the great provider. C. Yeah. C. And to Ramon, who reaped the harvest. Ramon. Yeah. Ramon. 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 Tell you the truth, Eric. I didn't. So, uh, what's for dessert? Hey, Eric, didn't you say something about a surprise? What's the surprise? Hmm. Ann, what's the sign for the film? Film? Film. I have film from. Really? Oh, great. We. I'm great. Oh, that's real. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pop corn. This hasn't all been edited together perfectly, but I think it'll give you an idea of what went on. Thank you. Yay. Oh, wow. Look at all those sands. Wow. That's the boat you were on? Yep, that's Regina Maris. Regina follows the humpbacks. She goes to the Caribbean in the winter near the Dominican Republic and spends the summer in the North Atlantic. What is that? It's a figurehead. Regina Maris, queen of the sea. There you are. <laughs> the queen of the sea. Hey, Sally Ruth, why did you go down there? To study the whales. Well, I know that, but um, what's special about? That's a silver bank. Uh, that's where they made and have calf. Oh, hey, a breach. A double breach. So the whales we've been seeing up here were down there last winter? 
Yep. Who's that? The captain, George Nichols. He's an old friend. Cast still up. Right in the sunscreen. Say again. Okay, make it about 108. What's he doing up there, anyhow? He's looking out for coral reefs. He's got to keep a sharp eye out so they don't bump into that coral. Make it 110. So they take students on these trips? Students and scientists. Sally Ruth again. <laughs> yeah, what is this? The Sally Ruth story? Hey, there's a baby breaching. Yep. Looks like he's trying to learn how. Hey, flipper flappy. I'd recognize that anywhere. What's that? Developing film. I bet I know what those are pictures of. I knew it. I haven't seen you yet, Eric. Oh, well, I'm taking the pictures. No wonder Sally Ruth is in every shot. Ah, good old matching flukes. Boy, I remember the first time I saw those things, I thought, no way, they're all the same. Now, I'm just a matching fool. Uh. <laughs> Who's the guy with the beard? That's Cam Balcombe. Yeah, he's the chief scientist. By matching up these flukes, we can chart the seasonal migration of humpbacks between the North Atlantic and the Caribbean. Ooh, pretty. This is the main salon, where everyone eats and sleeps. Are those the bunks? That's the, yeah, on the Regina, you have these little cubicles put all your belongings behind the little curtain and that's that's where you live. Not much privacy. <laughs> Here's a census run. I guess you guys have been doing some of this, right? Some? I count whales in my sleep. Uh, 155, two miles. That's a possible repeat. Lower it. Do you What's he making, a wig? That's chafing gear to protect the sails when they rub against the stays. It's called baggy wrinkle. Oh yeah, I always wondered how you make that stuff. Saturday was cleanup day. This boat's 144 feet long, so it takes lots of cleaning. We scrubbed her from stem to stern. Want to do it? Yeah, you all took a lot of pictures on daddy days. Hey, a sextant. What's that for? It's used for celestial navigation. Huh, what a life. Yum, what's that? Apple pie for a crowd. Mmm, turkey. That food looks fantastic. Turkey and potatoes and and stuffing and salad oh, so homemade hungry. bread. Food. And cranberries? Gosh. That's that Ken, what's his name? The chief scientist? Yeah, Ken Balcom. Some waves. <laughs> it was rough out there. It's 100 miles offshore. Really? Huh? Is that a whale? Yep. Wow, you're right next to him. Holy cow. What's that sound? It's whale song. Is that the whale that's making 
making the noise? Probably. It's hard to tell. I could feel it on my body. I didn't know what it was. There's Ken explaining to her what she felt. It's probably a male, because as far as we know, only the males sing. You can hear them for miles, so the water is filled with sound all the time. So they only sing when they're down there. We have heard fragments of songs in northern waters, but never real singing. The coral reef stops the big waves, so the water is calmer. You can see why the humpbacks come down here to have their babies. Hey, look, it's a calf. Oh, man! Eric, how old is that one? Oh, probably only a few weeks. They're 13 to 15 feet long at birth, and they grow about a foot and a half a month. The baby is 15 feet? Yep, and it weighs about a ton and a half. How does it feel to be so close to the whale? Were you scared? A little at first, but they were so gentle. It's really great. You use scuba tanks? Well, the bubbles from the scuba tanks uh, scare the whales, so you try to snorkel. Now what are they doing? Those are underwater microphones. We call them hydrophones. The sounds which you felt, we can hear with the hydrophone. And you can see the sound on this oscilloscope. We have another way to look at these sounds. It's a voice print. These are the low frequencies that you felt today. At several second interval, you have this roar. It's in a pattern of low frequencies. that you felt. During the summer, when they're feeding in the northern areas, um, only bits or pieces of songs have been recorded. Boy, I would really love to put on there and study those whales. Me too. You sure were lucky. That is such a beautiful boat. to the latest song. Whale song. <laughs> this is great. On the Mimi, we couldn't hear any whale songs because humpbacks don't sing up in the north. But down in the south, they sing like birds. A little. Almost. Well, they sing, anyways. I'm Mark Graham. Katie Payne is probably the world's foremost authority on the songs of humpback whales. She and her husband, Roger, have been recording and studying the eerie sounds of humpbacks for nearly 20 years. 
Her old barn in Essex, Massachusetts, is also her laboratory. As we sat by her wood stove, she told me more about whale songs. There's one species of whales that sings a lot, and that's the humpback, which you've seen. Yes. And they sing not all year long, but only six months, and it's the time when they happen to be breeding and um, bearing calves and are in the tropics. And all whales, all the males during that time, sing. The sounds the whales make are very beautiful, but uh, they don't sound like a song to me. Why do you call them a song? What I mean by singing is they're making a long set of sounds which then repeats almost exactly the same, just the way a bird singing is. A bird song biologically is defined as a repeating sequence of sounds. All the males in a population which may be most of an ocean basin um, are singing uh, these long sequences, long patterns of sounds that repeat over and over and over again, sometimes for 24 hours, even more perhaps at a time, and all the whales in an area are singing the same as each other. Does the male sing in competition for the female? Is it for breeding, or it, it just happens to be at that time? It's not really known exactly why they sing, but it, it does occur just in the breeding season. They seem to be territorial. It seems to mean, oh, this is my area. Oh, uh, because if another male comes into the area, there, there'll be a fight. How do they make the sounds? Well, no air comes out. Oh, and yet it is an in-air kind of sound. Yeah. And nobody knows what's going on inside them. But they do have a reservoir of air. They do have something sort of like a larynx. Nothing that's exactly like a um, vocal cords. Oh. But the thought is that air is pumped from one portion of a chamber into another, passing by some organ that can tighten or loosen uh, to change the pitch. Almost like, almost like the... Uh, that's, really, that's really interesting. That's really interesting. As it's, we're in kindergarten, I mean, we know so little about these animals. Katie spends a lot of time out on boats. She records the whales by lowering a special microphone called a hydrophone into the water. Because the hydrophone is very sensitive, because sound travels much better in water than in air, she can record a singing whale even if it's a couple of miles away. Some of the sounds they make are really loud, too. But Katie doesn't study the songs just by listening to them. She looks at them as well. She reminded me that we could see music in the form of notes. and explained that you could do the same thing with whale songs. She invited me to try to make pictures of some humpback sounds myself. We could, you know, we could make some music, we could make a... I guess I did pretty well. At least Katie could read the sounds I had drawn. <laughs> you sound like a whale. <laughs> but Katie doesn't have to draw the whale sounds like I did. The spectrum analyzer is a machine that makes sound visible. When any sound, whether it's a whale song or rock song, is played into it, a pattern of light shows up on a little screen. The pattern changes depending on how high or low the sounds are. Rising and rising. No overtones at all. The machine can take a continuous photograph of the screen. So when Katie plays a whale song recording into it, she gets a strip of paper with a kind of picture of the song. Not too different from yours. And in fact, here we have some of these strips, which you see I've glued down, one after another. And this, then, is one whole whale song. The only part of the sound that really shows the story 
is the bottom part. The top part just gives you the difference in tonal quality. So what we have here is a sound that swoops up. Swooping up and a grunt. And a swooping up one and a grunt. And another swooping up sound and a grunt. Wait a minute. What's that going to sound like? All that right there. Hang on, man. Wow. <laughs> Listen to this. And all these sounds are made by one whale. You bet they are. This entire thing is one whale. One song. What is uh, having it photographed and put on paper, how does that help you study a, a song? It's enormously helpful because the songs are so darn long. If the whales were just going chickadee-dee-dee, chickadee-dee-dee, you'd know. Okay, right. that's a repeating pattern. But here's a song that takes 14 minutes. Sometimes this whale's going to spend 20 minutes doing his song. And so you tend to forget some of the parts. And this enables you, when you've got sound, it's only just a momentary phenomenon and then it's gone. Mm. But if you can make it visual, well then you can compare what happens now with what happened before and what happens in the future. This whole song, it's similar to the one that came before it, product of the same whale. What is this? <laughs> the Payne's recordings are irreplaceable. I mean, they can't go back and ask the same whale to sing again. So Roger Payne built a fireproof vault to protect the tapes. It looked more like a bomb shelter. This is amazing. They store the tapes of 26 years of songs in this vault, along with an extensive collection of whale photographs. All of the tapes have been turned into spectrograms, a whole library of whale songs for Katie to study. As her assistant Linda played recordings for us, Katie pointed out the structure of the songs. Can you find it? It's just like a motorcycle. Yeah. I guess that's good. That's right. <sighs> that's eerie. <laughs> she explained that the songs are made up of themes and phrases. And these are a different type of sound from those. So we say that we've gone into a different theme. And each of these repeating groups, we say, is a, is a phrase. So we got woo 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 And the same pattern again next time. So each theme is made up of phrases. Exactly. Right. Take a look at this. This is so interesting. Several years ago, as Katie began to understand the structure of the whale songs, she made a surprising discovery. Over every season of whale singing, the song gradually changes in an orderly way. She showed me how by looking at a single phrase taken from songs recorded over a period of several years. You see, the phrase is lengthening with time. These two sounds are breaking up into four sounds. Each sound is getting longer. These little grunts on the end, instead of uh, uh, it's getting uh, 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 uh. And by the end of that year, we've got 10. <laughs> by the middle of the next year, we had 13 grunts on the end of the, on the, end of the year. Now these changes This is the most common way for the songs to change. Some phrases gradually get longer and slower, while other phrases drop out entirely. New phrases sometimes get made out of parts of old ones. For instance, so a lot of the stuff they do is similar to what human composers do. Uh, really a lot. The most fascinating thing of all about the humpback whales is that not only do they sing and not only does everybody who's singing uh, sing the same song, but the song is constantly changing. And all the whales that are singing are keeping up with the current of the change. It really is a fabulous, 
fabulous thing. They are composers, by golly. And all this time I've been into New Wave. I'm going to get into Whale Wave. <laughs> <laughs> if you really mean it, I have something I can give to you. Present. Are you interested? Yeah. Yeah, okay. This is a copy of uh, the New Wave in Wales. We haven't listened to this yet. We've just barely made our first spectrogram of this season's song. You're giving this to me? That's for you if you'd like it. I would love it. All right. <laughs> Let's see if I could read these lyrics. <laughs> Go for it. I think he's right on. <laughs> I just want to thank you for the day. It was a very uh, educational day. <laughs> yeah, it was educational for me, too. What do you do when you're not studying well? I like music, too. And um, I paint. Really? Yeah. I do things that are not scientific. <laughs> yeah, and I like to walk. I like to be outdoors. Mm. I take the whales partly as just an excuse to remind myself that I'm part of a much bigger scheme of things that mm. I really love. Well, then I have another question for you. Do you think the whales will make it? Yeah, I think the whales will. They'll make it. <laughs> we'll, we'll make them make it. Mm -hmm.